SL3000, Sands SL3000. Um, just pre be prepared to be amazed by how somebody can fit so many of their own mods, which I am quite proud of. So my design belly sheet works off a old um, ratchet strap. So when you want to take it off, just release a ratchet strap, let it go down and tighten it back up again once you've cleaned it. More of that later. So then she's on the row crops at the minute, but we've got the 600s, which is just a massive improvement from the old squabby things because you're higher, you've got more cleat so that you don't squash the ground down and literally walks on water if you need to in the autumn. We've um, strengthened the castings which used to be a problem with the old sands castings they did snap there uh, and I think if you look on the new ones they put this brace on so we put the brace on and we included the hoses hose protectors <clears throat> more of the belly sheet so row crops I said 600, other 650s, I can't remember. More of the belly sheet. And then when you put the big tyres on and you've got the big cleats, you create flying mud. So we built some mud guards and then an intermediate mud guard, stop it throwing up at the booms. <coughs> back mud guard. And then attached to the back mud guard is a mud flap. And we even managed to get it to curl so that it catches everything. Mud guard, obviously to leave the indicators visible. Now, before we fitted, and we fitted a pressure relief valve up there, I think you can just about see it with the corrugated pipe. Just there, pressure relief valve. Uh, when you switched on after filling back up again, because Sands don't use a Ramsey, there's high pressure which used to cause the diaphragms to go on the pump. Now believe it or not, that is the original pump on the sand sprayer. Now I don't think you'll see any of those still with the original pump. <clears throat> what we found was when we were changing the diaphragms all the while, we took a long while to get the pump off. So we put quick release hoses on the pump. We made the bolts to take the pump off captive. So everything can be taken off within, I would say if we was in a rush, we could take that pump off in five minutes as opposed to half an hour before. Because the quick releases <coughs> don't need blanking off, the pump, the boom stays in the air, so you don't need to prop that up. So take that off, take that hose off, take that hose off, and do those four parts. Off she comes. We've added the pipe for the induction hopper which we attach to there and then when we fill it up we hold it there and also we've got it there as well. We added the long handle to the induction bowl which just had that banjo there which was awful because you had to have your face stuck in the bowl to switch it on and off. So now if you're flexible enough you can operate that with your feet. I did actually change the induction hopper nozzle for um, the one that whirls round and round and we had to extend it so we had to come out down and along to get the cans on it we've got the boom lights for spraying at night they are really cool nice blue lights so you can see all your nozzles working at night triple nozzles standard single line i do actually take the bottoms of the uh, boom rails off for when I'm going through a rake. So little extension pieces taken off with a plate put in to replace to keep the strength. And then when you're doing your pre-emergence in the autumn, you need to be a little bit lower. So then we put them back in. Extension on the uh, input because of the mud guards. Now there's a fast fill on here. So what we do is we fast fill. So we, with the diaphragm pump we have on the bulk tank at home and on the bowser, we push the water. 
So because you're pushing the water, it helps the pump as well. So the pump's not dragging it. But with a diaphragm pump, it doesn't create a, a, too much pressure. So then when we're pushing with either the pump at home and the bowser, we push using the pump. The pump's pulling clean water into the induction bowl. And also when this valve's turned, it goes to the quick fill as well. So you've got clean water in the hopper and the fast fill working at the same time. We can actually fill this sprayer with chemical from the bowser in six minutes. That's assuming you can get the chemical in quick enough. I do protect the pipes that all uh, go up behind the uh, induction hopper when it's folded up. So here we have the row crops and the old fatties. So the old fatties used to squab the hell out of soil and it was lower so you couldn't go through the rape later on. <clears throat> With the new ones, they're taller, so you can keep them on going through the rake nearly to flowering, so then you don't need your crop dividers. I have got a patented set of crop dividers that fit on these holders, but since we've been using the wider tyres, we've not needed the dividers. Um, I've made a toolbox holder. It fits behind the side of the sprayer that used to hold all the um, blob markers, which just seems antiquated now. <coughs> We've got the um, standard cable tie for height of boom, and then we've got the outcast fitted for putting slug pellets on, going through the crop, which we used to do before we autocast our rape. Going back to the cab, a few little innovations here as well. Uh, just actually just show you a bit more about the um, how the belly sheet works. So we've got a bar there that it stretches to and a bar there. <clears throat> now the ATU we had to actually just cut that bit of the shroud to get it in round there. And because it's fitted at that angle, it doesn't get in the way of your legs. So the ATU cabling going down through the sleeve and down through the bottom of the cab. And then the patchwork doing a similar power and cabling going down through the cab. Uh, and also, I forgot to mention, um, when you switch the on off on your foot plate that's actually connected to an air switch which is under there but it's hidden by the belly sheet and that switches your uh, auto track screen to on and off so it fills in where you've been little drinks holder not full of beer but there you go So we've got a black box, patchwork black box, actually fitted to the top of the console. When we used to have it stuck on the windscreen, it, as all window stickers do, it used to fall off every now and again. We've got the position for the 2600 screen, or 2630 as I use now. Yeah, um, just a quick view of the displays when everything's there, so the 2630, the reversing camera and the sprayer RDS controller. And you can still see your wing mirrors and everything all right. CB fitted, ATU fitted. Absolutely brilliant for spraying. I've even, um, I've even recorded on adaptive curve all the headlands so that we don't miss anything when we're um, going around the headlands without a mark. Uh, control box for the outcast. Mobile phone holder. Bluetooth. Bluetooth camera. Uh, microphone. CD radio. And then resume. 
button for the auto track. Just find it quite easy down there. And then the ATU power on and off. And that's the switch for the boom lights. And standard for the rest of it. New, new joystick. I think that's about it, folks. You must be bored by now. Have a nice day.